Right, in this tutorial I'm just going to take you through the creation of a new wall type. Uh, we're going to take a section of that and we're going to annotate it and add a little bit more detail. So um, generally what happens here is I start with uh, a standard wall type as ships with Revit. So wall architecture like this. So we've got a basic wall here. Um, let's pop this one in. And uh, there we go. So that's the wall just created there very simply. What I generally do at this point is I would select this wall and then edit its type. So do this. What I actually do is I'll duplicate it. Um, and what we'll do then is just change the parameters so we can uh, have our own wall type here. So looking at this one here, we have wall uh, 102 brickwork, 75 insulation, 100 block, and 12 mil plaster. So what I'm going to do this time is um, change this slightly. I'm going to put in a 65 millimeter insulation. We're going to throw in a 40 mil air gap. Just trying to stick to the naming convention uh, that Revit uses. And uh, yeah, plaster at the end. So just finish all that and click OK. So now you'll see we got this wall external, 102 brickwork, 40 air, 65 insulation, and 100. Uh, that's lightweight block work there. And the plaster will be on the inside of that. So if we have a look at this, um, clearly nothing has changed here. So the, the structure is the same. We can preview it by clicking on this button. What we want to do is modify the structure of this wall to reflect what we have in our naming. So I click on the edit uh, of structure there. Let's do that again, I suppose. Might be a bit easier. Um, there's a construction structure. Click on edit. And we'll see here we have our various um, components. So if I click on this, you can see there the various parts of the wall. Now, what you see here is the outside, which you see the exterior side. So we've got finish four, common brickwork. Then we have the insulation, then we have the lightweight block work, and then we have the plaster. So that's those going from top to bottom there, so exterior to interior. Now what we can do is change this by going through these properties here. So for instance, I want my brickwork, and then I want an air gap. So what I can do is select on this thermal air layer, click insert, and by default it pulls up structure uh, as this new um, layer in the wall. So what we're going to do is change this to a thermal air layer and then we have to give it a material. Now this will all help calculate U values and stuff in the background. So what I can do here is just go into this material button. So it's going to take a moment to load up. And there we go. So there's air conveniently at the top, uh, alphabetical of course. So that's it. Select air, click OK, and now it has air. So I need to give this um, a thickness, so I'll give that 40. And the next thing I want to look at is the insulation. So the insulation is at um, 75, so I want to change this to 60. All right, you can see how this jumps around as we do this. Uh, next stage then is uh, our concrete masonry units, low density. As you can see there, sometimes you can pull this stuff out, get a bit more information. And uh, there at 100, that's fine. And then we have our plaster, 12 and a half. So that's the new wall type created. I can then click OK on that, and you'll see that this will update as well. So there you go. And click OK again. And now if we look in here, we can see our wall type. So there's our air, there's our insulations, uh, brick and block either side. Now, one of the things you'll notice here is the detail level isn't great. Now, if you can do a couple of things here, you can change the scaling on it, but of course that's going to be dependent on you for the entire view. Um, generally what we prefer to do is do things like call out. So what I'm going to do first of all is create a section on this. So go into the view tab here, create a section, and just cut through the, the wall like so. And now if we go into our project browser over here, we have a new section called section one. So I'm going there and have a look and we can see here that, well, we don't have an awful lot of detail. And that's driven by the details down here. So if I click on this detail level, I can change that to fine and we can have a look and we can get some of the information back. It would be nice however to um, get a closer look at this without messing about with the scale so what we can do here is create a call out. So I'll create a rectangular call out here and then just draw it over the, um, the area of interest. Now you can have anything you want in here, windows or whatever. 
Uh, we can do other things as well. For instance, we can pick up this head and move it about, and you'll see that it follows quite nicely. So let's pop it over there, for instance. And if we go back into our project browser, you'll see section one, section one call out. So if I double click into this, it's going to show me what's within this region here. So maybe we'll just uh, center that a bit better. Maybe. Okay, so there's our call out. And uh, yeah, even that up a little bit there. And again, you'll see that we don't have much detail. So we can change the detail level up to, sorry, there's a detail level to fine. And in this case here, I'm going to throw the scale to 1 to 10 on this detail. And you can see we get a very different view. Um, we'll see everything a lot better. You can see the various material layers and stuff. It's really quite cool. All right. Um, that's the first step done. So we've created a wall type. Now what we want to do is add a bit of, um, oh, I suppose, detailing to it. So there's a couple of ways we can do this. Now what I want to do is um, show the brickwork and the blockwork and the insulation. So what I'm going to do is first of all pop in the insulation, which is probably one of the easier ones to do. So we go into the annotate tab here, and you can see here we have insulation. So click on this, and all we need to do is simply draw it on. Okay, now you'll see what's happened here is it's drawing it on the center line, which is uh, not so great for me. So I'll cancel that. And instead of center here, I'm going to go to near side. And we'll see what happens this time. Uh, there we go. And I'll just draw that out to full length. So it puts it in. Now you'll see there that it's too big. So what I can do is simply grab this piece of insulation again. So I'll wait for it to, to light up. There it is. Clicked on it. And I can change the width from 80 back to 60, which is what we had. There we go, and it uh, looks like I'm going to have to move it a bit because uh, it shrunk it in a way I didn't like. So, let's grab it and move it over maybe. Or you can just delete it and start again, which is probably be the easier way to do it. Uh, sorry, let's cancel that. So, not to center, I want a width of 60 to the near side. Cancel that and go to the far side. And there we go. And never get this right. There we go. So there it is in. So now we have our insulation. Now the next thing we want to do is grab, um, well, put some block work in both here and here. So we have block work here and we want brick on this side. Now we can do this by putting in components. So in this particular thing, we want a repeating detail component. Detail components are just standard one-offs um, because you know it's a little animation there. Or we can put in a repeating detail, which will be just simply copying up components as we want them. So I'm going to click into repeating detail component here. And by default, it's coming up with brickwork in section, which is fine. And uh, it's not throwing any offsets or any other. So let's have a look at what we get. Okay, so I can just draw this up here like so. And there we go. So that's got in. Now it's not great because what we're seeing is the underlying hatch pattern from the previous. So if I just grab this for a moment and just move it out of the way, um, you can see what's going on here. When we see the other lines, this is appearing in our view. And we don't particularly want that. So what we can do to avoid this problem is set up a masking region around on, on this part and then apply this over it. So I'm going to leave that there for the moment. And uh, what I'm going to do now is create my new masking region. So we'll see this here again, it's under the annotate ribbon and we can click on this masking region. And we're going to choose the rectangle tool and simply just draw it over here. And what this will do is simply put a white space over what we're working on and finish it. And if I just click away from it there, you can see you just have white. And now what I can do is grab this and simply move it back into place like that. So that's looking a bit better. Um, still not perfect, but it'll do. Uh, when I say it's not perfect, the reason I'm saying that is because we still see the edges of the wall here. And it'd be nice to perhaps take those off as well. So um, well, maybe we'll, we'll do it on a different one. Now, next thing we need to do is get the block on the other side. 
So again, we're going to use a repeating detail, but this time we're going to, instead of using the bricks, we're going to use a block. So repeating detail component, and I'm going to drop this down and see what I've got in here. So I've got block work 100. Excellent, so we'll use that. No offsets required, and let's see where it goes. There we go, just draw this up, and you'll see that it just, as you draw it up, it does put them on. Uh, and again, we have the same problem here with slight bits of the underlying hatch pattern becoming visible. So again, it would be preferable to have a masking region on this. So what I'm gonna do is just undo that part. So it's our repeating detail gone. And again, I'm just gonna pop in a fill masking region here. Again, rectangle tool, and just drag this out to here. Um, and I'm gonna say, uh, see what that does, and finish it. So they're gone. I still have these lines slightly visible. Um, let it run. Now I'm going to go back into my repeating detail component. It's held my block work here, and I'll just pull this up to there. And there we go. So that's that done. Now, um, of course, it'd be helpful to be able to add some details to this. So when I say details, I suppose annotations. Um, so that people reading the drawing will know exactly what we're looking for. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. We can do this by popping in leaders, um, which are really you know quite useful. So I can put in, um, for instance, piece of text um, or whatever else, or we can use keynotes. Now keynotes are very, very useful. I'm gonna see those in a moment when we start looking at material keynotes. But for the moment, let's pop in a piece of text so it's clicked on the button there and it gives us a bunch of options. So if you hover over in there, so it's a one segment leader, two segment leader, or curved if you so desire, and you can set up how that's going to look in here. So I'm just gonna use a two segment leader on this one. And um, very simple annotations here. So there we go. Now it's gonna type in insulation. Let's click away. Um, type in air gap here, for instance. Again, I'm not spending a whole heap of time trying to use highly technical uh, descriptions on this one. Clearly, if you have a specification, you follow that. Um, but for the brick and the block, what I'm gonna do is use a material keynote. Now, this is quite an interesting feature because this allows us to uh, do a lot more with our specifications instead of well, at the moment here what we have is this insulation and air gap information held simply as a piece of text on this view when we use things like keynotes we now have an opportunity to standardize our annotation methodologies and then extract those later on for specification purposes so uh, in order to do this we have a couple of different ways of going about it um, we can apply, well, let's just have a look at it first of all. So if I go into the Manage tab first, for instance, I can go into Materials here, and this will show us um, a ton of information in relation to what we have. Now, we had low-density concrete masonry units as a selected material on that wall type. So if we want to go back and have a quick look at that, for instance, let's cancel out of this for a moment. There's our wall type, Edit Type. And in here on the structure where we selected this material here, you see concrete masonry, masonry units, low density. Now, a couple of ways of approaching this. That's what we were just looking at. Um, we can go through the wall and uh, set up some identity data in here, which is probably the, the most successful way to go about this because you could wind up tagging the wrong things. At least this way we know we, we've got what was right. Or we can go through the materials menu. So depending on how your model has been set up, you might find uh, one or the other easier. Again, you wind up in the same place. So what I've done, just go back to this, I've gone back into the Manage tab, clicked on Materials, and what I'm doing is selecting that material that we were using, which is our low-density concrete masonry units. All right, and you can see all the hatch patterns are set up here. Now under Identity, we have Revit Annotation Information, so Keynote. And if I click on this, it brings up this additional dialog, which will give us a whole bunch of information which we can then use. So I'm gonna go into masonry, 
And we'll see here, we've got brick or block walling, glass, natural stone, etc., etc. So it's going to fall under this one here, F10. And if we look at this F10 here, we have, uh, da, 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 um, let's see, common block work will be fine. So F10 350. So if I click on this, like so, and click OK, we've, what we've now done is we've associated this keynote, F10 350, with this material. And we can apply that and click OK. And what will happen is now that material which is being used on this wall, um, because we've got the associations correct, it will now allow us to use that keynote on here. So I'm going to cancel out of this, go back into my annotate tab here, into keynote, material keynote, and if I hover over, you'll see that it's pulled in the F10 350. If I hover over this, this insulation here, it doesn't know what this is, and it doesn't know what the brickwork is. So we get these question marks. So, um, Great, it's starting to work. So let's drag this and I'll put it to here and out. And there we go. Now one of the things to watch for as well when you are dropping these things in is um, sometimes they won't appear. So I'll just grab this and I'll just show you. If I bring this in too far, you'll see that note disappear. So just make sure you've got plenty of room there on the side. Um, all right, now the other way to do this to get our information in is to apply the keynote information at the time we're placing the, the, the keynote itself. So back into our annotate tab here, back into my keynote, material keynote, and if I click on say the brick for instance, let's drag that over here, there to there, because it doesn't have any keynote information already, it automatically pops up this and asks us and basically says, well, look, you want to put in a keynote, um, but I don't have the information, so please tell me. So let's have a look. Um, I think we were looking at masonry before. Brick and block walling, that's fine. And in here we should have clay facing brickwork, that's fine. So we just click on that, click OK, and in it pops. And again, having made that association, if we go back into the materials associated with this wall, we will see that this keynote has been applied. So I'm just going to do that very quickly just so you can see it. So back into my Manage tab, uh, click on Materials, and uh, there we go. We should have Brick Common, I guess. Let's have a look at the identity data on that. And there we see F10 110, okay, which is exactly as you see it there. And furthermore, if we go to the get the wall itself, sorry, I'm still in the keynote there. If we get the wall itself and go into the edit type and in here, uh, if we select this brick common, again, go back in and have a look at the common brickwork, click on the identity data and there it is. Now this is quite important because if for whatever reason we want to change all the common brickwork, we have a simple way of doing it. I think I'll just do that now to show you. So if for the sake of an, I wanted second hand facing brickwork, so F10 230, I can click on this, click OK. You'll see that that has changed. Click apply, click OK. Click OK again, apply, click OK, and we'll see now that we have F10 230. So anywhere that that would have appeared in the model, it changes over. This is really, really important because if we were to have this with standard types of annotations like this, we do not have the ability to quickly change um, something like that. And of course, if this information is being fed out to further specification, then this works a lot, lot better. All right, I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you very much.